welcome back aliens my name is david reddy and let's continue with the series on javascript in the earlier video we have talked about arrays we have seen how do we iterate those elements and then uh, it was quite fun right but now it's time to understand how do we destructure an array now i know that sounds weird right because in the earlier videos we were creating arrays but now i'm saying destructuring so let's understand what do i mean by destructuring an array so here, what we will do is let's create a simple array first. And of course we can go with uh, numbers or we can go with string as well. Whatever we are doing with numbers will also be applicable for string here. So let's create a simple array. And with this, I will have an array of numbers. So let's say we have five, seven, two, four. And so of course this is an array, right? And if you can print this, I can say log and I can say nums. The only thing is, oh, let me just run this code. So the only thing is you will get this array as it is. You will get all the elements in one array. But what if I don't want the entire array? I want to uh, I want to take one element from this array. So uh, you, you'll be saying, hey, it's simple, right? You can simply use the index values. Uh, so here, let's say if you say index zero, of course you will get five, right? Uh, if you say index one, you will get seven. But then what if I don't want to do this way? What I want is I want to take this array. Uh, see, th there are chances that you might be sending this array to a particular function to perform some operation. Or maybe you want to send this array on the internet. Uh, so let's say from the server, client will receive this array. Now, of course, client can also use index values, but what if this array get destructured and assigned to four different variables? Something like maybe I want to assign five to A, seven to B, two to C, and four to D. Now you will say, hey, it's simple, right? You can say let A is equal to nums of zero. And then likewise, you can say for B, C, D, and E. That's one way. The other way is the video which is all about is destructuring. What we can do is we can put those four elements, which whatever you want to assign, let's say B, C, and D, and you can assign the array to this. So you can say nums, or you can say A, B, C, D, and we are assigning to nums. Now what will happen is, this array will get destructured and will be assigned to these variables. These are four different variables here, okay? Uh, let me prove my point by printing them. So what I will do is I will say log and let me print D, okay? Let's see what happens if I print D. So you can see we got the array as it is, which is printed because of line number two here, but I'm also printing this four. Now why this four is because I'm printing D, and D has a value which is four. Quite simple, right? Okay, this looks cool. What about I want to print C? Will this work? Let's try and it's working, right? So you can see we got two. Now what if I don't want to save this C? I just want A, B and D. Can we do that? Let's say I want to print D, but I don't want to collect C, okay? So maybe I want to work with A, B and D. So can we skip C? Uh, the answer is yes. You can simply add an extra comma. So the moment you give a gap there, it will understand, hey, you want to skip the third value? I will do it for you. So there's no C variable now. It's only three variables, A, B, and D. Now, is it compulsory to put that uh, comma there? Yes. When you put a comma, that means this D is a fourth element. But if you remove the comma, and if you try to run this code, uh, you can see it still works, but the value of D is two, where I wanted it to be four. So that's why you need to put that extra comma, which will make sure that you will get four as output. So this is working. Uh, what I will do is I will just remove this part for time being so that we can see one single output and you can see we got four. So even this is working. Can I create a array of string? Of course we can. So what we'll do is let's do that later. As of now, I just want to discuss one more thing. Let's say I have two variables. Let me just remove this. Let's say I just have two values here. Okay, so we got five and seven. Or maybe I will just uh, go with two different variables. I will say, I know this is not a good way of defining variables like A or B, but time in it works. So let's say we got let A is equal to five and B is equal to six. Now, if you remember, whenever you learn a new language or any language for that matter, you do this type of examples, which is swapping off two numbers. How do we swap two numbers? Of course, it deserves a separate video, right? Uh, how do we swap two values in JavaScript? A very separate video, but can we do that here? Uh, there are different ways of swapping two variables, but here what I will do is I will use a array destructuring to swap these two values and it should be in one line. So the way you can do that is by using the syntax, I can say a comma b, so just observe what I'm doing and I can say b comma a 
And now what is happening here? Since this is array destructuring, so basically we are taking an array here, which has two values, B and A. So value of B is six, the value of A is five, which is getting assigned two different variables. I mean, of course the same variables, but it doesn't know that, right? So you can see we got A. A is getting assigned with six and B is getting assigned with five. Let's see what happens. Let me just print the value A comma B and just remove these extra spaces here. And let's run. And you can see we got six and five. That's how you can swap two values. Not a best way of uh, using this array destructuring just to swap two values, but why not when you have a choice? As a programmer, we always look for cool things to make things easier. And what if we can do certain things in one line? That would be great. Easy to manage, right? Okay, so we talked about how do we swap two values as well. But now I just want to do something else with strings. So let me remove this part. And this time I just want to create a array of a string. Okay, so what I can do is, of course, I can uh, also do this with the help of split method. So what I will do is I will say let, and let me create a array of, let's say words. That's the array I have. Now this array has to be created with a string. So let's say the string is my name is Naveen Reddy. Okay, so I have this string and then I have assigned to to a variable here, but I want it to be an array. So example, when I print words, it should not print in a string format. It should be an array format. Uh, the way you can do that is by using a very special function or a method which is called split. And in this split, you just have to pass. Okay, so you just have to split this string, but based on what? Uh, so I can say split this based on a character, which is space. And if you run this code, you can see we got an array, which is separated by a space. Cool. Uh, so once we got an array here, what I want to do is, of course, this words is an array now, right? So I want to take all these elements, of course. So just to reiterate, this words is not a string now, it's an array, which has five different values. My name is Naveen Reddy, five values, right? Now I want to assign this to variables. Of course, I can take A, B, and C as well. Let's do that as well. So let's take that. So let's say A, B, C, D, and E. And I want to assign to word. Will it work? Of course it should. Why it will not work? So let me print A and B, just two different values. And let's see what happens. Uh, just let me put a semicolon, not compulsion, but let's follow that. And you can see we got my name. So my is stored in A and name is stored in B. I can also print my actual name. So I can say D and E and you can see it prints Navin Reddy. So that's how basically you can store the values. I can actually do one more thing. What if I uh, want to store my name, which is Navin Reddy in a separate array? So of course it should be A, B, C. Let's say I don't even want to save that E is so I can simply skip it, right? We have seen that and D, E should not be two different variables. It should be one variable having my name. If I simply write D, it will not work. The reason, so let me just try that. Let's run. And you can see we only got Naveen. What I wanted is Naveen Reddy. So this D should have Naveen Reddy. Maybe if I have something else here, maybe my, can we add something here? Maybe I also want to add Talisco. Uh, so Naveen Reddy Talisco, uh, that's not my surname, don't worry. So here, how do I get these three values in this one particular variable? I want it to be a, a separate array. So what we can do is we can use a special assignment or can we use assignments, special operator here, which is three dots. So when you say three dots, it simply means rest of the elements. So this A has taken my, B has taken name, the empty element, which is not mentioned is taking is, which we can't use anyway. And this thing will use Naveen Reddy Telusco. Okay, you might be thinking just because I have three words, that's why I'm using three dots, not exactly. It doesn't matter how many words you have here how many elements you have, it will be always three dots. Even if you have 10 words, it will always be three dots. So let's run this code and let's see what happens. And it worked. Can you see that? We got Naveen Reddy Talisco. Uh, let me add something else here. I will say log because we also have a blog channel. Uh, so now we have four words, right? Uh, will it still work just because of three dots? Uh, it works. Doesn't matter how many words you have. The dot 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 means rest of the elements. So that's it from this video. I hope you understood what is destructuring of an array. In the next video, we'll try to understand how do we destructure a object. So that's it from this video. I hope you enjoyed. Let me in the comment section and do subscribe for the videos. Bye-bye.